Hi, I'm Katherine Leonard. Welcome to Highland Springs High School. This is my AP Physics C class. Today we are going to be looking at inclined plane stations. Students are going to be working through the inclined planes, just working through their free body diagrams and writing their net force equations and sort of teaching themselves using the information we've already learned through the unit um, how to do this last step in our unit on forces. All right, so guys, you guys have um, your station set up. Everybody has a different setup here. And you'll notice that I have a captain. So I want the captain to be in charge of making sure that your team stays on task, making sure that they are doing things in a timely fashion. And then you are probably gonna be the person who might do a little research for the team because you might not know how to do every step in the problem. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to calculate theta. That may be one of the things that you need to look up. If somebody in your group knows how to do it though, make sure that, that the captain is telling the, that person, explain your steps. So we wanna show all of our steps on the whiteboard so that everybody understands it. Captain, make sure everybody understands what's going on before you move on to the next step. You should have somebody who is a recorder, somebody who can write things neatly and in an organized fashion, not all the scribble all over the place, because remember, everybody has to be able to understand this. Yes, sir? Uh, unfortunately, our group does not have right <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. Um, once, once you have found the theta, the angle of your incline, I want you to draw your free body diagram. But once your free body diagram is done, I want you to call me over. So if the captain could just raise their hand, call me over. I want to do something with the free body diagram before we move on to steps three through six. What are we starting out with? Okay. What are we starting out with? Yes, Will? Calculating the angle. Finding the angle. If you don't know how to do it, where are you going to go to find out? All right, you can ask, ask somebody in your group if they know, or what if nobody in the group knows? All right. All right, so you've got computers, right? You can Google it. You can figure it out. After your angle, I want your free body diagram. What do I want you to do after your free body diagram? Mm -hmm. I want you to call me over, okay? Because I want to show you something with the free body diagram before you move on to the next step, okay? Make sure you put units on your answers. Make sure you put arrows on your free body diagrams with your labels. And then let me know when you're ready. Any questions before you start? All right, go to town. Yes, sir. Is the what? All right, so this is our normal coordinate plane, right? We have our X, we have our Y, this is what we're used to seeing in math class. So far, all of our motion this year has been left and right, or like our elevators, up and down, okay? Now our motion is this way. Oh, this way, because that's the way y'all's incline is going. But unfortunately, that doesn't line up with an, with an axis on here, and that makes the work a little bit harder for us. So what we want to do instead, pause that. What we want to do instead is we want to tilt our coordinate plane so that our motion is now on an axis that we're used to, okay? Christian, can you grab me that purple marker? All right, when that happens, we are gonna spin our MG. So we have our MG down, our FF up the plane, our FN perpendicular to the plane. We're going to spin it that many degrees so that we have a component here and we have a component here. This is our angle theta, and it's the same angle as this. Do you all remember in geometry doing like transposing where you take a triangle or a shape and you flip it or mirror it or something? That's what this is. All we're doing is taking our triangle and we're flipping it so that our right triangle is here, our right angle. And then that means that's our theta. So whatever this theta is, which y'all have figured out is this, is the same theta here. Then we look at our components. This is our adjacent one. So ah, mg cosine. This is our opposite one, mg sine. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we do what we have been doing all year for this unit. Sine theta is equal so, to one point four divided by theta. So we're just using tangent here since it's opposite over adjacent. Okay. 
So we just do 1 divided by 1.5, and that is 0.66. And then we find that using tan to the negative first power, so uh, tan negative 1 like this, 0.66, and that gets us 33 degrees. And this unit has been left and right, or elevators up and down. Now we are a, we're going this way, so we're doing a combination of the two. Well, that makes the math so really difficult if we keep our coordinate plane the same way. Mm -hmm. So instead, what we do is we tilt our coordinate plane. That way, it spins this far that way, and then those are your components. You only ever do this for incline planes. You don't do it for like tensions hanging um, because that motion, usually if it's a tension, it's static, right? It's stationary. So we don't need to even worry about motion, but this is my angle theta. It's the same angle as this. And if y'all remember from like geometry class transposing shapes, the way you can flip them, these are similar triangles. So that theta is the same. So if this is 16.7, then this is also 16.7. Yeah, don't do Just plug, plug this into the calculator with this. It should be ten. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, so yeah. Ten, 10 minus 1. And then parentheses. Parentheses 0.7 is 0.5. Which is 1.4. So is that the yeah, four and then one point four is your angle. No, that's no. just that divided by that. The angle is Wait, why did you do that divided by that? Because that's what no over there. Got to get Miss over here so we can see what she's talking about the full body diagram. This is the full body. FEDs. No, but remember she said call her over here once we finish that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, so now we just gotta wait for her to finish talking over there and then we should be ready. We gotta calculate the normal force, the friction force, and the coefficient of friction. You can't do that until we do the full body diagram that she was talking about. Yeah. Because these two are equal to each other and these two are the same as these two. Okay. So you so get all the get forces all. are equal to each other. You okay. get one to get them all basically. So these are similar triangles. If you remember transposing and mirroring symmetric uh, shapes and geometry, this is all we're doing. This is my theta. All right, so now we have to do our trig stuff. That's my adjacent side. I know the part y'all love. This is my mg cosine theta because it's adjacent to the angle. This is my mg sine theta because I'm opposite the angle. Then we have to write our net force equations. So that's the next step. This one, see how we have two forces in our new x direction? We have one down the ramp and we have one up the ramp. Mm -hmm. They're opposing each other, right? So they should be. So they would be if it's static, which in this case it is. We'll talk more on Monday about well what happens if it's not static. Well, this is uh, the, how much it, yeah, this is the weight of it. Um, it's I mean, it's just, well, this isn't uh, flat, so normal, oh, wait, here we go, here's the equation, it's the mass times gravity times cosine angle, multiplied by just some number, right? It, it's the frictional force equals um, mu times fn. And if we have fn and ff, then we just have to divide ff by fn, and we get the mu, and that should be the, the coefficient. You got it? Yeah. Yes? T's are usually tensions. Oh, are there yeah. tension in here? Oh. Or is there tension in here? No. no. Nope. So what is there? Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. So we have tension now instead. Sorry, we don't have tension. We have a normal force because we have a surface. Yeah. And we have a frictional force that's keeping it from sliding. Yep. All right. Here's a normal axis, right? Yep. X on the horizontal, Y on the vertical. All of our motion this year has been horizontal or vertically, which means it has landed every single time on one of these axes. Mm -hmm. But now our object is going that way. Yep. It's not landing on either axis. So we're going to tilt our axis. So 
so that it does. Now oh, our sliding down the ramp. <laughs> this is why I'm explaining it to you. That's why I wanted y'all to stop. Um, now our sliding down the ramp is on our x-axis. And now it's made, made math a little bit easier for us. It's basically just... What was spinning? So it's just the basically the wires. The so now we just need to... I'm going to spin this exactly... Do you think I did this better? Oh, either. Theta degrees. Yeah, you put this in theta. That's the same. That's the same. Um, I think that's how it is. That's the correct. Degrees, that's the same one. Okay. Then we do our. And this one needs to be in degrees. This one is our degrees. I think that's our degrees. Or it's our degrees. Check. It's using both coordinates. It's not sliding across the coordinates. It's more difficult. Because it's easier and more work to do. So we. There's one thing missing on that one that all the others have. Oh, the arrow. The arrow. Oh, okay. Remember, no arrow, no vector. All right, the other thing, is anybody pushing or pulling on this? No, it's an equilibrium. So that's not there, okay? So this thing is literally just sitting on the ramp, okay? So FG down, F in at an angle perpendicular to our surface, FF is trying to keep it from moving anywhere. And this is a static problem, so it's not moving. On Monday, we'll talk about well, what happens when it slides. So this is going to be our MG, but it's going to be a component of MG. So we have spun our angle this way, exactly that many degrees. Because this angle and this angle are the same theta. Okay. Then we do our components. This is going to be mg. This is adjacent, so it's going to be our cosine one. This one's going to be mg of our sine one. Yep, because it's the opposite one. <clears throat> and then if we look at our picture, mg has sort of disappeared now. Like we have what we need from it, we've broken down the components. We look at, where's our marker? We have an up and we have a down. We have a, what direction is that, right? And we have a left. So when we have opposite directions, how do we put them together mathematically? We subtract them, right. So we're going to subtract. We have our go. This is trying to make it go. Yep. And this is our slow. Now these two, if this is my ramp, my object's going this way. It's not going this way. So that means on an incline plane, this and this are always going to be in equilibrium with each other. It can only accelerate in one direction for us. Okay? So now that you have your free body diagram with your components, write your net force equations for the x and for the y. It's half grade. Why? Why is it half of gravity? Uh -huh. Because there are two, for two equal forces that are pulling mm -hmm. up on gravity. Therefore, they're split in half. They're sharing but the weight of gravity. But are they equal? They are because it's an equilibrium. Okay. Or the y components are equal. Okay. And the x components are okay. opposite. Okay. Right. So you split that. So 25, and y'all, what was y'all's angle? 23? 20, 22.62. Okay. All right, so what's your question, Judah? I was wondering how they did the normal force equations. All right, so the normal force equation should be Fn minus mg cosine theta equals ma. Yeah. It's not accelerating, right? So Fn has to be equal to mg cosine theta. Oh, I did. Yeah, you know mg, you know theta. Oh, I, you I got it then. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Guys, I have gone, come around and looked at everybody's free body diagram. I've explained the sine and cosine, swing in the mg. Once you are done, ask me to come over so I can check your work. If your work is all right, also don't forget your units, I want you to write it in your notes. These are your notes for incline planes. So that's why I said we need to make sure that they're organized and everybody understands what they are because you are now writing them in your notes for yourself to use them for homework. Capiche? Got it. Thank you all for coming to our class today. I hope you enjoyed our lesson on inclined planes with our AP Physics C class.